Uh, let's go up somewhere. Where, uh, where's Sarah? Right here, Sarah. Uh, uh, let's go dead, dead center front row in the red, and then uh, and then the person in the white jacket and the orange. Yes, with your hand up. Yes, you'll be next. So right, right here down front in the black shirt, right there. Um, really quick cool question. What? Well, I maybe mean, it's not so quick. For each of you, what was the most interesting moment of this year's cruise? I know Camille has already expressed that it was all the people who walked up to him and offered to help on Tuesday night. For each of you, what was your most interesting moment this year? Um, I'm going to do the politician thing and then twist the question a little bit. Now, two things. One, I'm not supposed to say that out loud. Sorry. It wasn't much. <laughs> I'm, I'm all. I'm right here. I have, I have no separation. Um, one, it wasn't. There are a couple of people who came up to tell very personal stories, which I'm not going to share, but that um, how Joko Cruz has helped them very personally in their lives, and I feel like that's something that this community does on the whole, and it's not just us, but what comes out of it that um, both how it improves people personally and that within the community throughout the year, the support that's there. Um, and then on the lighter side, the my, my favorite moment was the depths of San Juan when the rain was coming down in cheeks and sideways and it seems to be coming from the ground. <laughs> and we are Backstage, and it was the moment when we thought, oh God, and everyone was heading back to the ship. And we thought, we're going to try to make this work, but it was the moment when we didn't think it was going to happen. It was simply not going to be possible to get the band onto the ship for technical reasons. And standing there um, with Robin Goldwasser, and we're both like, this is it. We're Firefest now. <laughs> like, we're ruined. There's a Times reporter here, and we're going to be unmasked as frauds. And at that moment, the fireworks went off. <laughs> and yeah, for those of you who may have missed it, by the way, that was supposed to be our big surprise for you all at the end of the giant set, was we had a three-minute fireworks display. Yeah, I'll tell you that we, we were, I was back in the, in the sort of office area next to that uh, restaurant, and I was just filling everybody in on what had happened, because we had only told the front area, because we didn't have the PA. So I ran across to, to fill in the rest of our team about what was happening, so we could start to fan out and make everything happen. And uh, everybody was on the phone and radio to everybody else. And, uh, and Diana um, uh, from Worldwide, who is the uh, company who helps us set up and run this thing every year, um, she, she said, they were asking, what do you want to do about the fireworks? And I was like, set them off. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that, that seemed and it, that moment. And, and as I was walking back, as I was walking back to the ship, they started going off behind me. And it was just the greatest <laughs> moment. It was just like. <laughs> That was my favorite moment by far. Started laughing like the Joker at that point. <laughs> yeah, that was so insane. Um, I had told this story at uh, an event we had for our, our Silver Max, our longtime uh, Sand uh, Sea Monkeys, and I will say it again uh, because uh, it made me cry and it occurred to me, and every time I have since told the story, um, that it was essentially 90 minutes from the time we officially canceled the Giants on land to the time they started playing here on this stage, which in itself is an unbelievable, remarkable event that I'm still pretty sure didn't happen in the living in the VR space. But it was, you know, so it was a whirlwind of all of us, but from my own perspective, me just trying to figure out the, the decision tree of we gotta get this people here, we gotta get the band on the ship, uh, we gotta uh, get the ship's crew up and setting up drum sets, the drum kit, and plugging things in. And I barely had my phone was soaking wet and barely working, and I didn't have my this phone. Um, so I spent that 90 minutes running around and not paying attention to uh, any of my messages or anything like that. And I finally, once the show started, and I took about a five minute breather. I looked down on my phone, and there are five or six texts from various performers on the ship just saying, is there anything we can do to help? And, uh, and I was, uh, there was also the experience of running back to the ship myself and there were 300 of you or so still waiting in the security line. And, you know, if this were a fire festival, 
you would have been throwing things at me as I'm running past you getting cutscenes in the line, and everybody was just cheering me on. I like to think, cheering on the event. Well, you know, thanks for the cheers for me. I just took it on behalf of all of us. And I realized that in that 90 minutes, finally, the phrase I heard the most often, by far, was, how can I help? And that speaks tremendous volumes towards the community that you and we have built on this ship or on this cruise event over nine years and uh, I just I cannot state how incredibly grateful and humble that makes me feel to know that that's everyone's reaction when it absolutely would have been everyone's right to say I wanted to see a thing like the Giants concert and this sucks and you should have had some sort of rain contingency well before here and what have you and I still haven't heard anything other than that was incredible. How can I help? This is a story for the ages. And just everybody being so positive and supportive and just ready to go with whatever. And, and that will move me for some time to come with the story I will take home for years from this year's event. And that said, we are already making contingencies for next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to be clear, the, 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 there, we did have a, there was a possibility of doing a sort of rain version of that show, of that setup, and setting up a big tent and all that stuff, but we had to do that 48 hours before, and the weather forecasts from the ship, even day of, even 30 minutes before the giant set, it was, it was, we were bouncing around between five or six apps that are always saying clear after 9 p.m., and then uh, suddenly 20 minutes later, drizzle starting in 20 minutes, yeah, and, and suddenly and deluge. Not to make excuses, but it really was one of those things where it was like the weather did not do the thing that it was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Drew's here. Here's Drew, everybody. Uh, the, 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 the question at hand was uh, favorite moment of, of each of ours from the cruise, if you have one. Yeah, mine is, mine is also from that uh, night. <laughs> you know, it's what I'm talking about. Uh, the word that almost came out of your mouth was hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't, it was difficult to know what was even happening that night. Um, the call to move to the ship was made on channel two, and the office was on channel one on the other side of the venue. And so we, for a while, were trying to get everybody to stay. And we're watching them go, and then we're hearing them. People are telling the guests to leave, and we didn't know what was happening. Um, and we brought, and Jonathan came over and like gave us the update, got everybody onto channel one, and then everyone split into their groups and, and started making it happen. And then, you know, we needed umbrellas, and. We were going to send a runner, and instead we got Sea Monkeys to go to the stage and bring the guitars back. I don't know if you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when, when we were in the terminal, you know, the Sea Monkeys made way for the audio gear to come on board, and some of the Sea Monkeys were pushing road cases on. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, want to run a professional cruise, obviously, and uh, having the guests push road cases <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a part of official contingency. Yeah, yeah, that's not plan A, B, C, or D. Um, but, uh, you know, the, when, when it became clear that we needed bodies and we needed them right away, um, I had no hesitation asking the Sea Monkeys for help because uh, it's, I, I, know, I know you guys, I, I know you all, and I know that you believe in this cruise. And that it's a great time for all of us. So it, it meant it meant a lot to me that in our hour of media, yeah, and I came forward and you helped. I, I want to. I tweeted this, but I want to say say it again on microphone. That event could not have happened if every domino hadn't fallen into place, and the utter enthusiasm and professionalism of the band members of They Might Be Giants, their crew, our tech crew, the ship's tech crew, and all of you. It was like everything just fell into place and. It was so easy for that not to happen, and we are so grateful to each and every one of them for and you to, to make it happen so fast. Yeah, the ship's crew was called in in their pajamas and flip flops. Yeah, like a thirty-minute lead time, and they they made it happen. They were thinking about creating a maybe minute-to-minute -minute reconstruction, like from the moment that Jonathan stepped off stage and what happened and how. Fascinating. I think mine is mostly. Ah!